Uh, hello and welcome. Today I wanted to talk about CSS Grid and building a very quick grid uh, for a blog website. I've already done one of these videos before, but I feel like that every time I do it, I not only get a better understanding, but I feel like I explained it a little better. So let's go ahead and build a quick HTML document. Doc type HTML. Luckily, we have auto completion. Auto completion um, helps us get, get this done a lot faster. Go. Uh, we'll go ahead and declare our styles here in the head so that we can keep a single file uh, auto reloading um, and we don't have to worry about switching between uh, HTML and CSS. Um, we're going to go ahead and declare a few um, resets. There we go. And inside the body, we're going to go ahead and create a, a div called blog, or rather with a class blog. And that's where we're going to put all of our items. Now, before we get to the CSS, let's go ahead and build out the structure of our blog of what we'd expect. We would expect a header of some kind, right? Um, and I'm going to use a little bit of Emmet here um, to generate HTML pretty quickly. Um, and in our header, we're going to have this navigation that's going to have um, a link to home, about, blog, Sounds good to me. And I saved it and auto reload works. Fantastic. Um, after the header, we probably want some main content area. Uh, hello world, this is content area. Um, we'll probably have a sidebar, so we'll create a side element. And inside of it, we're gonna do, well, basically what we just did. Um, we're gonna create one, oops, article copy this a few times because that's usually what you'll see in a sidebar. There we go. And after the sidebar, all the way in the bottom, we should see a footer that might have some copy information. There. And so this is kind of the basic HTML structure you'd expect for a blog, for like a um, main content sidebar uh, blog that has the header on top, footer on the bottom except you'd probably wrap these two middle parts together in a separate div so you can position them next to each other. Now before CSS Grid, there have been many, many techniques of uh, positioning elements next to each other uh, using floats, using inline blocks, using tables. Um, Flexbox is kind of the latest uh, kit on the block other than CSS Grid. Um, and CSS Grid kind of makes all of this much simpler, which is fantastic. Uh, but before we dive into the grid, let's go ahead and do a little bit of styling. We're gonna use, um, we're gonna add some styling to our sections here uh, for the purposes of you know seeing the the blocks and how they align and how the grid works a little bit easier. Uh, we're gonna give it each of those elements a border. There we go. We're gonna give them a padding of five pixels, margin of five pixels, so they're not pressed up against each other, and a background color. GPA 25050. I am missing this up. There we go. And we're going to make it 30%. So if they do overlap, we can kind of see that. Great. Um, one more thing I'm going to do before I move on is make sure that the list items, the list elements for the um, for the navigation up top display in, in the block. Bam. Great. Uh, now, here we are presented with a problem where we need grids. We need to somehow be able to align these two sections in the middle, um, left and right of each other. And in some certain situations when we use media queries, we'll want to um, reorder these elements in a certain way. Um, the way this works is, is not really that great. So what we're going to do is use the CSS grid. So you actually declare the display um, property with the with the value grid on the parent of the grid items um, of the grid areas basically uh, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start declaring the template and what it looks like so we can declare columns and what this will do is split our entire layout into however many numbers or however many units we put here so if we do 10% 10% 10% 10% It'll split into four columns that will take up 10%. Um, we can use per percentages this way, 50%, 50%. Uh, you can see that it'll actually create a, a neat 
you know, equal grid, or we can use um, a new unit called a fraction, and it's uh, the shorthand for it is fr, or the, the unit um, the unit name. So if you do one fr, it'll take up 100%. If you do one fr, one fr, uh, we'll split the layout in two. Now this works um, kind of, right? We want the content and the, the sidebar to be split, but everything else needs to take up the full width of the layout. Uh, so this doesn't work on its own. So what we're gonna do next is um, use one of the most powerful features of CSS Grid, and it's the uh, Grid Template Areas. To use Grid Template Areas, we have to name each one of the children of the, the um, CSS Grid container. We have to name them with the Grid Area property. So the header, main, aside, and footer. The header will be called header. Main will be called main. The side will be called sidebar because I actually don't like the names aside. And footer will be called footer. Uh, you get to use these names, uh, and you can see the change already. Everything's kind of stacked on top of each other. So glad I did that RGBA thing. Um, yeah, so all of those divs are stacked on top of each other. We have to actually declare a layout for these, how this is going to work. So for that, we'll use the grid template areas property here. Um, now, we, since we have a two column layout, what we can do is um, split these all in a way that we want. So we have to we have to write, write in the layout, basically. Um, so the first row of the of the grid will actually be the header and it'll span both sides. And it's not working out well here in this in this example because we have a lot of grid areas that we haven't addressed yet. Once we put all these into a certain row, they'll show up correctly. So the second row will be, oops, the main content. Ah, come on, align right. Main content, uh, right next to it will have the sidebar. What does that look like? Great. So this, the grid is starting to come together a little bit, and we want that last part, the footer, to take up both of those columns again. There. And so now you have a now you have an entire layout, and you didn't really have to think about it. You didn't have to do, do much of, you know, crazy floating, inline blocking, or wrapping the middle area with whatever you wanted. Like you didn't have to do any of that stuff. You you got the power of the grid here in just writing out how you want each row to show up. Now, one thing we want to do is we're going to actually want to make that sidebar a little bit thinner than the main content. That's usually how um, websites lay things out. So we can actually create a ratio. We'll say it's a three to one ratio and it shows up this way. What's cool with this entire setup is that you can move the grid areas around independent of the HTML. So let's just say that we realize that Hey, if we put the footer next to the header, we save some space, and it still looks pretty good. Yeah, and you can have it in the same layout, as long as you know it's a repeating layout. Um, so you can do that. And maybe we'll just make this a little bit wider. There, it actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't like it, so we're gonna put it back. Now, another cool thing that you can do with this is you can declare ratios for the individual rows in the in the grid. So we have the columns, right? This is a column, this is a column, you know, you have a two column system right now. And then we have the rows where this section is a, is a row and this section is a row and this section is a row. Um, so let's go ahead and declare the ratios for that with grid template rows. So we can use fractions, same way as before. Uh, the middle area is gonna take up three, um, three fifths this is one fifth and one fifth. Um, and that looks kind of cool. I'm going to do one thing here real quick, and that's declare the height of the blog, uh, the blog item to be 100%. And now you can see that it actually takes up the entire screen. Uh, what's cool about the grid system is also the fact that you can mix and match um, different kinds of units. So what we can do is set up the header to be 50 pixels tall and the footer to be 50, 50 pixels tall. And the middle section with the main and sidebar will just fill up the rest of that space. Ooh, all that padding and stuff is making this look pretty ugly. So we'll just do that. There we go. That's kind of the power of the grid system. Uh, one more thing we're gonna do is uh, create media queries. What is this gonna look like in mobile? Um, as you can see, again, 
This is just a little bit of CSS, not a lot of CSS, and you get a whole grid that used to take up a lot of time thinking and testing in space. So we're gonna go ahead and create an alternative grid system or an alternative grid definition for devices that have a max width of 400 pixels. 400 pixels is, I don't know, one of the more usual numbers that I see for you know, phone restriction. We're gonna go ahead and clear that dot blog again. Um, this time we're gonna do a single column layout. So we can actually do this. And this should make everything take up 100%. Problem is, we have the grid template areas that we need to redeclare. So uh, right now we wanna override this two column layout and write out our own single column layout. We'll put header top. Uh, main, right, sidebar. All right. Bam. We're back to where we were. When we're pro or we were, we're now to the single column layout. Now we can do a grid template rows and redeclare that as well. And we're going to do is um, assign 100 pixels to the top. We'll do one fr, one fr, and then one pixel to the one pixel to the uh, 100 pixels to the bottom to the footer. And I'll change this a little bit. Cool. So now we have a um, now we have an alternate layout for mobile. These work together. What's great is that we can also move these around, like I said. So maybe we actually want to show the footer up top. Um, right after the header. Uh, that's actually a pattern that I've seen before. And we can do this. And we're moving things around. There. Looks pretty good. So this is the basics of, of creating grid systems. There are a lot of cool options, a lot of cool things you can declare. There are some helper functions for helping with uh, declare the uh, template columns and template rows um, and again this is stuff that you can override using media queries or other classes it's just kind of a fantastic grid system it's not it's it's so much simpler than float so much simpler than inline box so much simpler than tables um, and you get to move these elements around and you get to do you know whatever you want with them and still use the grid system to, to declare where they're going to show up